New space, or new space, is a movement and philosophy encompassing a globally emerging private spaceflight industry. Specifically, the term is used to refer to a global sector of new aerospace companies and ventures working independently of governments and traditional major contractors to develop faster, better, and cheaper access to space and spaceflight technologies, driven by commercial, as distinct from political or other, motivations to broader, more socio-economically oriented, ends. Investment bank Morgan Stanley expects 2019 to show key milestones and catalysts in the new space sector", and advises its customers to "...pay attention to space companies". <laughs> Meaning of "...new space The term new space has clearly meant somewhat different things to various people over the years of the 2000s when the term picked up usage. Satsearch conducted research to better understand how the term new space is used across the space industry and in popular understanding globally during 2018-19. They reported that the common consensus is that new space is an approach that focuses on lowering the barriers to entry to space industry, by providing cheaper access to space and more high quality and affordable data from space that can be put to use here on Earth, for the benefit of scientists and the general public. One of the major characteristics of the new space era is the, the fundamental shift from an industry which was heavily dependent on government agencies and taxpayers' money to a more agile and an independent private sector that relies on innovation, working with much smaller budgets than the early space industry. Hobby Space, awarded the 2007 Best Presentation of Space by the Space Frontier Foundation, came up with the following. List of characteristics which would help determine whether a particular endeavor is considered as a new space approach. They mainly include the following. Focus on cost reductions. An assurance that the low costs will pay off. Ensuring incremental development. Foray into commercial markets with high consumer rates. Primary emphasis on optimizing operations. At the heart of it all, innovation. Topic: History. The space race, which began in the mid-1950s and gave birth in earnest to spaceflight, was famously a manifestation of the then larger politico-economic competition between capitalism, represented by the United States, and communism, represented by the former Soviet Union. For this reason, from the very beginning, the American business establishment particularly those bellwether private firms directly involved in the U.S. space program has championed the private development of space and space activity. In 1961, writing as one of the deans of the American business establishment, Ralph J. Cordiner, then chairman of General Electric, a blue chip, charter prime contractor to NASA and the U.S. space program, contributed a chapter titled, Competitive Private Enterprise in Space, to the anthology Peacetime Uses of Outer Space. While recognizing at the time the realities of having to initially rely on the U.S. government's vast and convenient organization, resources, and power in order to effectively address the immediate Soviet space challenge, Cordiner nonetheless advocated private sector dominance—ultimately—of space activity, consistent with textbook American capitalist ideals, Syncom, Hughes Aircraft Company's commercial communications satellite system, was originally conceived as a direct competitive response by American private industry to the Soviets' successful deployment of Sputnik in 1957, the Cold War event that triggered the space race. While Syncom was eventually successfully deployed in 1963, Dr. Harold Rosen, the Hughes engineer responsible for developing, championing, and spearheading Syncom, also brother of Ben Rosen, a pioneering Silicon Valley venture capitalist and entrepreneur, and Wall Street technology analyst, cited a general lack of confidence in the U.S. government's early launch capabilities. He later explained the Syncom project's lengthy gestation period. 
This was not the most auspicious time late 1950s to propose a commercial space program. The most vivid impression most people then had of space-related activities was of rockets blowing up at Cape Canaveral. Topic: 1980s US commercial space policy and enabling legislation. Notwithstanding the free enterprise sentiments and preferences of American industry, space remained a firmly government-controlled and directed endeavor well after the capstone Apollo moon landing in 1969. The term, alt, space, was first used in the early 1980s to describe companies that were at last beginning to take up Cordoner's mantle and make serious efforts to reach outer space without needing or relying on the cooperation of NASA or other governmental agencies or, by extension, even their major contractors, efforts which were catalyzed by an historic shift in U.S. policy favoring private space activity, culminating in the landmark Commercial Space Launch Act of 1984. Beyond the terminology, alt, space, private space, new space, or new space, since the 1980s, the philosophy of various organizations such as the Space Frontier Foundation in the United States has been one of extolling the virtues of solar system settlement and operating independent of bureaucratic government programs. 1990s, post-Soviet U.S.-Russian private space ventures The seeds of today's new space were brought to fruition by the collapse of the former Soviet Union in 1991 and the releasing of that former rival superpower's iconic, state-owned, and otherwise mature and proven space assets, technologies, capabilities, and services onto the world's private markets with the assistance of a handful of largely American private firms, notably these core four, international Launch Services F. K. A. Lockheed Krunichev Energia International, Lockheed Martin JV, Proton, Est. 1993, Commercial Space Management Co. CSMC, Energia, Zenit, Road 170, Est. 1993, Sea Launch, Boeing JV, Zenit, Est. 1995, and Mercorp, Mir, Soyuz, Progress, Est. 1999. Until that moment in world industrial history, no private business enterprise or entrepreneur could rightly conceive of, for example, leasing, or possibly owning and operating, an orbiting space station, such as Mir, or even just ordering a space launch in the ordinary course of business. Until then, even for a telecommunications giant, like AT&T, placing a commercial communications satellite in orbit, for example, was a fairly monumental undertaking. Contrast that with today, when a $100 million space launch vehicle can now be specified, built, priced, ordered, and eventually even launched online through, for example, United Launch Alliance's RocketBuilder website, once that industry-wide mental block was removed, once the ease relatively speaking, and normalization of planning and conducting space activities began to dawn on private industry, the animal spirits of aerospace capitalism were roused, entrepreneurial vision and imagination started to abound, and new space began to take shape in earnest. This set off today's competitive, industry-wide, virtuous cycle of faster, better, cheaper, a project and systems management philosophy pioneered in the space field by NASA, and otherwise paved the way to today's generally far more vibrant and conducive space business environment, whether or not involving Russian space resources, at this point, where entrepreneurs, investors, regulators, lawmakers, supranational organizations, non-governmental organizations, organizations, NGOs, the media, and other key ecosystem participants are now able to deal with privately conducted, for-profit space activity more rationally, practically, and cost-efficiently than ever before. Werner von Braun summed up the historical institutional bureaucratic cautiousness towards space activity in general by famously quipping, we can lick gravity, but sometimes the paperwork is overwhelming. 
In his 2016 Wall Street Journal review of Julian Guthrie's book How to Make a Spaceship, A Band of Renegades, An Epic Race, and The Birth of Private Spaceflight, Greg Easterbrook highlighted the seminal importance of these often overlooked post-Soviet private space efforts in enabling and shaping today's new space. How to Make a Spaceship centers largely around the efforts of space entrepreneur, Peter Diamandis, and his Ansari X Prize won in 2004 by the SpaceshipOne team led by American aerospace engineer Bert Rutan, and funded by Microsoft co-founder and billionaire Paul Allen. SpaceShip2 was then funded by British billionaire and industrialist Sir Richard Branson and his Virgin Galactic. To set the stage, Guthrie retraces the private space industry's development path, however, according to Easterbrook, Mr. Diamandis wasn't the sole entrepreneur to pursue private space flight early on. Ms. Guthrie covers other, peculiar attempts. Neglected in Ms. Guthrie's account is Sea Launch, archetypal post-Soviet Boeing JV with Russians and others, the first private project to send heavy objects into orbit, including, in 2001, the big satellites Rock and Roll, the initial broadcast towers of XM Radio. Every bit as eccentric as the efforts that How to Make a Spaceship describes, Sea Launch fired large Russian Zenit rockets from a ship at the equator. Equatorial water is the ideal position for space access. Compiling a record of 32 successes, three failures and one satellite functioning but in the wrong orbit. In 2001, the FAA, asked confirmed that new space pioneer Sea Launch was indeed T. He first privately financed, working launch system and infrastructure. Near the end of the 1990s, favored by strong public policy, and spurred on by the foundational success of these post-Soviet U.S.-Russian private space ventures, there was a dramatic increase in companies engaging in this process, leading to common usage of the phrase, new space companies, new space, most prominently, entrepreneurial space, and commercial space. Are now the most commonly used terms, though, alt space was still seen occasionally as late as 2011. Topic: 2000s Silicon Valley style entrepreneurial space initiatives. Things changed further in the early 2000s as Elon Musk formed SpaceX with significantly more private capital while he articulated a strong and consistent vision of the colonization of space, beginning with Mars. However, one company in a worldwide milieu of government-driven spaceflight activities simply did not cement a movement. This began to change with the increasingly public revelations and pronouncements of Blue Origin after 2014. Even though the company was formed about the same time as SpaceX, it had maintained a very low profile in its first decade and a half of existence. By 2016, both of these private companies, with billion US dollar plus backing by committed investors, were successfully vertically landing and reusing space launch vehicles. Both companies are building large reusable orbital launch systems that will utilize currently under development rocket engines that are each at least four years along in development, and are already in use or under development test on ground test stands, all with a focus on radically lowering the price of carrying people and cargo to space. Beginning on November 23, 2015, Blue Origin successfully demonstrated the repeated reuse of a rocket for the first time ever, by completing five suborbital vertical takeoff and landing VTOL flights of the same New Shepard rocket, a feat for which Blue Origin was awarded the prestigious 2016 Robert J. Collier Trophy. On March 30, 2017, SpaceX successfully relaunched a previously flown orbital class rocket Falcon 9 for the first time in history, an achievement many compare in significance to that of the Wright brothers' first flight. Celebrated astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson described the underlying economic importance of SpaceX's otherwise technical milestone, any demonstration of rocket reusability is a good thing.
When we fly on a Boeing 747 across great distances, we don't throw it away and roll out a new one. Reusability is arguably the most fundamental feature of affordable expensive things, echoing DeGrasse Tyson's post-flight sentiments, former NASA official and current engineering dean at the University of Colorado Boulder, Bobby Braun, compared the Falcon 9 rocket to the first successful commercial airliner, the Boeing 707, which ushered in the jet age. Topic. Industry verticals While new space is currently a primarily horizontal market phenomenon or force which cuts across or «converges» many traditional, existing space industry «verticals», i.e., vertical markets including spacecraft, launch vehicles and services, scientific research, etc. The ultimate promise of new space is that it can become a true general purpose technology or meta technology, uniquely enabling the creation of new, emerging, and even once unimaginable verticals, including heavy lift launchers with Falcon Heavy, SpaceX, BFR, SpaceX, or New Glenn, Blue Origin, New Armstrong, Blue Origin. Smallsat launchers with Rocket Lab, Vector Launch, Relativity Space, Firefly Aerospace, PLD Space, Virgin Orbit, and Land Space. Imagery for Earth and Space, e.g. Planet Labs, Spire Global. Tourism with Space Tourism. See the list of private spaceflight companies. Including Space Adventures, Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin. Telecommunications with various satellite constellations, e.g. SpaceX Starlink, OneWeb and Mineric. Real estate with Bigelow Aerospace B330, Axiom Space, Axiom Space Station. In space manufacturing and construction with Made in Space Arcanaut and Tethers Unlimited Spiderfab. Mining of asteroids and planets with companies like Planetary Resources, although future unsure, and Shackleton Energy Company. Energy harnessing, funeral services with space burial. Both Elysium Space and Celestis offer mass market services. Scientific research brokerage with nanoracks. Education with Enterprise in Space Developing an online education program with new space companies Arts and Culture with JP Aerospace's Exobiotanica Project, Exhibit Governmental environment Regulatory schemes In the United States, new space firms and activities are primarily regulated by the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation generally referred to as FAA, AST. However, given the intersection of potentially many and varied agency interests at stake in any new space venture e.g., FAA, FCC, NOAA, DOD, NASA, FDA, DOE, DOC, etc., and the sheer infancy of new space as an industry, it appears a comprehensive and user-friendly U.S. regulatory scheme has yet to be developed and put into place to the general satisfaction of new space players. Right now there are significant gaps in the U.S government's regulatory authority and licensing process for newly emerging commercial space ventures i.e., new space firms and projects. Processes exist for some ventures, but not for others. In many cases, it's not clear what agency, if any, a commercial firm should go through to get approval. The lack of clear rules, authorities, and process is needlessly driving up risk for these firms. Worse yet, it may lead some of them to move to countries where there is greater regulatory clarity or less oversight. <laughs> <laughs> Laws and regulations Space law 
Space Law 101, An Introduction to Space Law American Bar Association European Center for Space Law ECSL. NASA Transition Authorization Act of 2017 S.442 Treat Astronauts Act HR 6076 Commercial Space Launch Act of 1984 Commercial Space Launch Amendments Act of 2004 Space Act of 2015 35 USC Section 105 Inventions in Outer Space Executive Order 12465 42 USC 2465D Topic International Treaties United Nations Treaties and Principles on Outer Space US USSR Space Agreements 1992 and subsequent Topic Business Ecosystem Topic Active Companies Topic Dormant or defunct companies, e.g., industry pioneers. Andrews Space, Armadillo Aerospace, Deep Space Industries, Escape Dynamics, Firefly Space Systems ceased operations in 2016. Assets purchased by new investors, which formed as Firefly Aerospace in 2017. Garvey Spacecraft Golden Spike Company Mars One went bankrupt January 2019 Mercorp Pioneer Rocket Plane Rocket Racing League Rocket Plane Kistler Rotary Rocket Sea Launch, Boeing JV Skybox Imaging Space Dev Space Island Project Swiss Space Systems XCOR Aerospace Topic Other Organizations American Astronautical Society American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics AIAA B612 Foundation Center for the Advancement of Science in Space Commercial Spaceflight Federation Inspiration Mars Foundation The Mars Society National Space Society The Planetary Society ShareSpace Foundation, Buzz Aldrin Space Access Society Space Angels Network Space Foundation Space Frontier Foundation Space Studies Institute Space Settlement Institute Space Tourism Society Spaceal TMRO U.S. Space and Rocket Center USSRC Topic. Governing Bodies FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation FAA, AST. National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA. National Space Council Indian Space Research Organization successor to the Indian National Committee for Space Research European Space Agency China National Space Administration Russian Federal Space Agency Roscosmos Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency JAXA United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs UNOOSA Office of Space Commerce US Department of Commerce 
Center of Excellence for Commercial Space Transportation, CoCST, FAA. Topic: Academic Institutions. Space Studies Institute, founded by Dr. Gerard K. O'Neill of Princeton University. Space Policy Institute, George Washington University, founded by Dr. John M. Logsdon. International Space University. Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT Media Labs Space Exploration Initiative. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, BS in Commercial Space Operations. Purdue University, the Neil Armstrong Hall of Engineering Project Buzz Aldrin Purdue. University of Maryland, College Park, Space Systems Lab INCL. The Neutral Buoyancy Research Facility. University of North Dakota, Department of Space Studies. American Military University, online BS in Space Studies. University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, Master of Engineering in Space Operations. Webster University, MS. In Space Systems Operations Management. Arizona State University, New Space Initiative. National Institute of Aerospace. Students for the Exploration and Development of Space. Space Camp. Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, II. University of Michigan, Meng, Space Engineering Program. Topic: Media and Events. Ansari X Prize. Beyond the Cradle: Envisioning a New Space Age Conference, MIT Media Lab. Collier Trophy. Canadian SmallSat Symposium, Toronto. Google Lunar X Prize. International Space Development Conference, National Space Society. Catherine Wright Trophy. The New Space Age Conference, MIT Sloan. New Space, official journal of the CoCST. New Space Conference, Space Frontier Foundation. New Space Global. SmallSat Conference, Logan, UT. SmallSat Symposium, Menlo Park, CA. Space 2. Zero. World Space Week. Yuri's Night. Topic. See also. Space industry. Billionaire space race. Commercial use of space. Space launch market competition. List of private spaceflight companies. List of government space agencies List of space travelers by name List of space travelers by nationality Timeline of private spaceflight <laughs>